Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of Hiring and Inspiring. Today's guest is David McMurdo. David is, well, firstly, a chap who I initially met in the pub. <laughs> we <laughs> met uh, in a pub in Sydney uh, a few years back. I think we were watching an England game. Um, we got <laughs> got chatting um, and yeah, connected uh, on that night. And um, David works, uh, he's always worked in, in the world of sales. Uh, he runs his own a sales consultancy business, um, well-established guy, all uh, all things sales, all things leadership, um, and I'm, I'm really excited to catch up with him today. It's been a, been a little while. Find out what he's been up to, find out some more um, you know, about his business and also his, his, his prior working history and learn a little bit from him and, um, yeah, see, you know, what sort of wisdom he can impart and, you know, talk all things, I guess, sales, business, uh, leadership, um, and a little bit more about his journey. So, David, with that introduction, mate, welcome to the show. How are you Thank getting you. on? So, yeah, no, it's great to be here, Joe. Thanks very much, mate. It, it has been a while that I think we even saw in the wind, which nowadays is is more usual than not. But it was uh, it was a good catch up, and uh, you know, I think you know I've been following your journey on LinkedIn, which has been great, and I love the podcast. So I'm really chuffed to be part of it, mate. So. Yeah, most welcome. Away. So it, I'd love to start in the, in, in the present. Uh, your current venture, Murdo Consulting, your current business. Talk to me about what exactly you're doing um, in that role. How and how you're sort of helping your your customers. Yeah, no. Uh, look, I uh, worked up in Singapore for about four and a half years. Uh, business been through a few sort of uh, transformations in that time. We got bought out by a big American company. And I came back to Australia and I thought, what do I really want to do? What am I passionate about? Uh, and I'm uh, very passionate, I think, as you and I have talked about in the past, all things sales. So what McMurdo Consultants is all about is helping organizations, sales organizations, transform the way they go to market and improve the way that they sell. And we do that from everything from uh, sort of high level strategy, sales strategy facilitation with senior leaders through developing the very best sales leaders. I'm very passionate about that. I believe sales leaders are the conduit to people's success. Uh, and then things like key account management, pitching for large pieces of business, presenting, negotiating, good, solid core sales and, and sales planning something that not all salespeople are particularly good at. To summarize it, I suppose, and it might sound a little bit cheesy, but meant quite a few years ago now, I went to school on one of these dad's days at my daughter's primary school, and they asked the kids, what does your dad do? And, you know, dad's there, and he's a, you know, he's a lawyer, he's an accountant or whatever else. And Mackenzie, my little daughter, stood up and proudly said, and she was six at the time, my dad helps other people make money. <laughs> and that's sort of been my strap line, actually, ever yeah, since. Brilliant. And that's yeah. really what we're all about. I think she'd like a slice of that now, but she mm. can wait for it. But, uh, that's very much what we do. Yeah, gotcha. So, so what, what does that actually sort of look like? So say I came to you um, and said, yeah, David, I, I want to help. I, I need help with you know how my leaders are, are leading the sales team and also how my salespeople are selling. What would you sort of offer? What is it? actually look like you're, you're offering? Yeah, no, I, I, that's a great question. And and it isn't a one-size-fits-all. Fits all. Okay. I'm very conscious of that. There's a lot of, uh, and I worked for one many years ago back in the UK, a classic what I would call sales training company, where they've got a series of core modules and they sort of fit what you need around those modules. Because we're a bit more nimble now uh, and a little bit smaller, and probably because I've been doing it longer, uh, we always start with a bit of diagnosis. You know, where are you today? What's going on in your marketplace? How's that changed? What are your ambitions? What are your aspirations going forward? And then we build any intervention around that. And some of it, yes, is training people. You know, it's amazing how many people haven't been trained in sales, to, to put it, you know, quite bluntly. Yeah. And it, it's quite amazing. And I find that quite astounding in this day and age. And it took a real bit of a hit as you can imagine through COVID because we couldn't do the face-to-face -face. it had to be on on this medium 
Uh, and whilst we were lucky, we actually doubled in size through COVID because we could touch a lot more people through this medium internationally. I think there's there's still not a lot of uh, nothing better than trying to be face to face. So we'll we'll align with where people want to get to. Do you want to actually uh, you know develop a new strategy based on what's happening in your market and the demands of your customers? If so, what does that look and feel like? Uh, what's the capability of your sales leaders? You know, you know, Joe, we've, I've seen on your other podcast, you know, the, the big challenge is that a lot of sales leaders have become leaders because they've been the best salespeople. And even though it's the oldest cliche in the book that sometimes the best salespeople make the worst sales leaders, yeah. a lot of the time it's because they haven't had the development. They don't know what it entails. And I've got great stories of people that actually went back into sales and were incredibly successful because of it. And then once we've we've developed the leaders to both be the conduit between the strategy and where the business is going to and really be the conduit to the front line, it's then what are the key frontline tools and skills we need to develop with you, the client, to really execute on what your strategy is and that's what we do and that can be uh you know training sessions it can be coaching sessions it can be sitting down consulting with people around what their kpis should be what their remuneration structures should be even what their overarching sales structure should be and we've worked with clients around that now in australia for about five years uh and successfully and it seems to uh, to resonate, and we get a lot of repeat business and a lot of referrals. So I can only assume we're doing the right thing. Mm. I like how it's it's not you're not sort of going in there and being like, right, this is how you do it. This is how it's always been done. This is how I, you know, you're you're mm. very much collaborating and consulting with them and yeah. ask, asking their challenges and then giving your sort of opinions and, and best sort of diagnosis yeah. moving forward. What what are the sort of main challenges then that you know that the, these leaders or you know the, your clients that they're coming to you saying they we need some help with w- when we're talking sales and leadership and this is more you know in the current the current modern world what 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 can you sort of enlighten us with there oh, oh look the, there's there's no doubt that any sales leader any board that i talk to and i'm talking to one at the moment well quite a few at the moment but one specifically in new zealand you know, their first thing is, how are you going to help us increase our sales, both top and bottom line? How are you going to get our salespeople more effective at not giving margin away? How can you help us get into different market sectors? How can you help us gain a bigger share of wallet? Uh, You know, those are the things that we hear an awful lot, as you can imagine. Uh, And those are the challenges that we really try and address. You know, we've we've had great successes. I remember going into COVID with one national electrical wholesaler and distributor, you know, successful business. Uh, and what we did was we basically said, you know, where do you want to get to? What do you think your biggest challenges are? And for them, it was both winning new business, but really connecting at a deeper level with their existing client base and gaining greater share of wallet, whether that be new categories or more of the same product. So we work with our sales leadership team. We developed a workshop with our sales team. And of course, the real challenge with that was we were just about to come into COVID. So, you know, halfway through the rollout, suddenly here we are and everything's on screen. So we work with them on that. And, you know, the great thing was that they look back 18 months later And in a market where a lot of their competitors were purely interacting via things like email and at best phone, they actually upped the level of activity they did. They booked meetings via Zoom and Teams and other other methods. They trebled the amount of interactions they were having with their client base, and they grew their business by 35% through COVID. So, you know, all those challenges can be addressed but there's the science about it, which is very much the planning, the right tools. There's the skills around it as well. But at a leadership level, there's got to be the commitment to making it happen. It can't be seen as, 
there's some training off to one side because that won't address those challenges effectively. Mm. So and I know there might not be one answer to this, but they're, they're sort of, you know, those clients of yours that are saying we want to, you know, we should be winning more sales. We should be getting more from our existing stuff. Like, what, why aren't salespeople maybe thriving as much as they, they should be? In, in your in your opinion, what what are some of the, the obstacles that they're facing? Look, that's that's another great question, Joe. Because I think, look, I'll tell you a, a great quote that I got from a sales leader the other day, and I said to him, "You know, where do you see your sales team?" And I actually saw this in one of the big banks as well. And the sales leader turned around and said, "Salespeople have lost the habit of selling face to face." Okay. When you think about it, for two two and a half years, depending on where you were around Australia, we weren't out there physically in front of a customer. We might have done it through Zoom or Teams, but we certainly weren't doing it uh, face to face. And it's amazing how many people lost that habit, lost the confidence of, you know, looking somebody in the eye, shaking their hand, having yeah. a bit of small talk, sitting down, structuring a meeting. It was quite amazing, really. And uh you know, that's been one of the things is about reinstigating those winning habits. The other comment I would say as well is that there's no doubt that COVID shook, you know, the market incredibly. Uh, it definitely accelerated people's use of online and digital because uh, there was no other way to communicate. So, you know, one of the things we're seeing is that people tried to translate face to face physical skills into a Zoom environment, and people weren't very good at it. So that was a challenge we saw as well. But the other thing is as well that people get in habits. You know, if we've been selling for a long time, as I have, and I know, you know, you're, you know, I saw your birthday last week. I'm not going to say that I've been doing this longer than your, your, your age, but it's not far off. But, I mean, the scary thing is people get into a habit. And previously, they might have been successful. But suddenly, the market changes. The demands change. Uh, you know, maybe market, uh, you know, people aren't buying as much. And suddenly, your whole mindset has to change. You know, we have to be willing to upset that just doing what we've always done isn't going to get us the same output in a market where potentially customers are becoming more demanding. You know, you've probably seen the research out of books like Challenger Selling and, and, and you know, great books like that. And Matt Dixon's, you know, a great guy who I know quite well. But, you know, what is it now? 58% of a sales process is done before you even get to meet or talk to a salesperson because they can do their research beforehand. That was never the case. Yeah. So, you know, the way that buyers buy is different now. So therefore, we have to adapt as salespeople. And I think quite a few salespeople haven't adapted or aren't willing to adapt. And I think that's quite a challenge. The only other thing, Joe, I'm going to throw in, sorry, you've got me on a roll now, no, is that actually this, and this is probably going to throw a grenade into the whole piece, but this working from home, you know, and blended and hybrid learning, I've got no issue with to some degree. The challenge is that, you know what? You learn by sitting next to your colleagues, hearing what they're doing, hearing the challenges they face. We don't get that at home. And I know so many of my clients uh, are not struggling with that, getting people back into the office. But the, what I call the learn to earn ratio, in other words, you join a new business and then you're up and running and being successful. They reckon it's increased by two or three times the timeline. Because quite simply, you're not just sat in an environment listening and hearing and learning if you are in a casual way. Yeah. It's got to be more formal. So lots of different things going on at the moment and lots of different things and lots of new challenges that we're facing. Yeah. I, I think on just that last point, the work from home piece, I couldn't imagine being you know, a 22-year-old coming out of university, say you wanted to get into sales, and then you, you join a company and you're, you're sort of working from home you know, doing video calls, making cold calls from your bedroom. I couldn't imagine how hard that would be because the learn you just wouldn't be getting the learning that you get 
well, I know that I, I, I got to imagine lots of others did from the office, as you say, learning from the top performer in the office, yeah. shadowing them a little bit, making a ton of mistakes, learning from other mistakes. And I, I think that's definitely something that's, you know, that the sales of the world community needs to think about because that next generation coming through, um, I mean, are they even coming through? I don't know. I don't know. Look, there's um, definitely, there's an expectation of, you know, I can achieve success quicker. I think we hear that across whichever gen it is. I can never remember which one, but uh, <laughs> Gen Z or millennials yeah. or whatever. There's certainly an expectation that we can move through organizations quickly, but you're not going to do that unless you're good at what you do. Mm. And there's nothing like, you know, as we used to call it, sitting with Nelly and, and learning from the great performer next to you or observing somebody or getting feedback off your sales leader, you know, whether it be an office environment or going out on joint calls. You know, it's not just going on a training program. It's not just learning online. It's, it's experiential. And I think we've got to be very careful that hybrid learning, and by the way, I work from home, but, you know, I've got no issue with that. But I love getting out. I love interacting with others. And I still do that with a lot of my colleagues, old colleagues, who, interestingly enough, are probably now competitors. But we still learn a lot from each other. And I think that's a key thing we shouldn't forget. So a couple of things you mentioned there, the learning piece um, and the being adaptable. Yeah. I kind of think that we're just going to talk about maybe some if we talk about, let's say, some top performing salespeople, key attributes, those kind of things. I always think about in, in sales, being a, being adaptable, being yeah. able to change your approach, as you mentioned, and that sort of never finished mindset. You're always learning. They're two of the things I always think top performers, top salespeople have. What would you maybe add to that list what, in, in, in your experience? What, what are sort of the common attributes? I think attributes both of those are, are key. Uh, you know, I think the mindset piece is a lovely uh, – uh, and I'm going to plagiarize a bit here. There's a lovely uh, equation that some colleagues of mine came up with a few years ago. Um, my previous business, we were lucky enough to have a couple of the chief psychs from the Australian Institute of Sport work for us. And we also had Kieran Perkins, the swimmer, work for us for a while as well. And that was fascinating hearing their view on mindset. But I, I love the equation, which is knowledge plus skills plus process in brackets multiplied by mindset equals exceptional performance. And when you think about it, what's the multiplier? It's the mindset. Mm. And anything multiplied by zero is zero. So you can have the great knowledge, the great skills, the great processes. And the challenge is if you haven't got that mindset, that belief in yourself, that willingness, that drive, that passion to succeed, you're not going to be able to access your knowledge, skills, and processes effectively. The other side of that, of course, is if you haven't got a knowledge, skills, or process, you've just got great mindset. There's nothing worse than a motivated idiot. So you've got to make sure you get that balance right. So, you know, we were lucky. A couple of the guys that we work with did a lot of research into the mindset piece, you know, having great focus, having self-belief, uh, having resilience, picking yourself up, all of those elements I see in great salespeople. The other thing is as well, Joe, if I can say this, is some people try to overcomplicate sales. You know, sales is actually quite a simple thing, but it's about doing it simply all the time. You know, I'll give you an example. The one that I still see, and it, you know, it, it freaks me out, especially with experienced salespeople, is preparation. And, you know, before you pick up the phone, before you're going to see somebody, preparing for the call. You know, what, I, what do I want to get out of it? What's the purpose? Why is it important to the customer? How am I going to go about doing that? Have I got the right questions prepared? Have I got the right collateral? What is the outcome I want? And it doesn't have to be a sale. And, you know, a lot of people don't do that well. Yet, you know, I can't remember the old famous expression, but of something about poor, you know, poor preparation leads to whatever. Uh, and I won't use the words, but we all know it has a big impact. So sometimes just some of that real core stuff, you see great salespeople still utilizing it. 
because that's the foundation of their success. They don't take shortcuts. So that's a couple of things. Mindset, critical. Uh, have an absolute curiosity with your clients and a curiosity to improve. Uh, and don't forget the basics because that helps as well. That's the foundation. You know, our, uh, you know, you've probably done it as well if you're a big sports person. You know, you see, and we've got the, the British Open golf this week. Those guys will spend hours on the practice ground hitting basic balls for each of their clubs before they're thinking about how am I going to fade this around this tree or how am I going to, you know, uh, hook this around this particular bunker because I've got myself in a bad position. They practice about the basics. You get the basics right, you can build from it. And I'm a great believer in that in sales. That um, When you mention about sales, is actually quite easy. You just have to do it over and over again or yeah. just keep 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 doing it. I just that's just being that's huge for me I think that that's I always bang on about this just being consistent just show up again yeah. and again and because uh, I always you know I always think maybe I'm not the most talented person but what I do is I, I just keep showing up I just show up every day yeah. and then that's how that sort of that, that compound interest of you just showing up again and again and again and again and again you know that's how you maybe win that that client you're looking to to break into and then that's how you edge out that that com, that that competition because a lot of people they might show up for a week you know with a lot of fanfare but then 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 they're gone and they they don't they don't back it up i always think that consistency if if someone can get that consistency in their sales um you know just general process and methodology then they're on to the winner seems like you agree yeah look there, there isn't a shortcut you know, it, especially in the business that you're in, I'm very similar. Uh, you know, there's three things that drive great sales outcomes. Uh, you've got to make sure you go and see the right people. So in other words, you've done some good research. You understand the market. You yeah. understand the type of business you're going to see. You understand the type of person you're going to see. You've then got to put in the effort and the activity. You know, even if you just focus on the quantity of effort, you know, the more people you see, the more you're likely to get a better outcome. I know that's crude. And I think just measuring people around that alone is wrong. So you've got who am I going to see? What? How much am I doing? And then, of course, you've got to work on the quality of what you do when you're in yeah. front of people. But if you manage those three parameters, it drives success. But it all starts by, I think, that turning up piece, Joe, is absolutely right. You know, we used to cold call in the in the good old days when I came into this industry, you know, a hundred lifts of the phone a day. Uh, you know, it was it was ruthless. And I remember one guy and he'd had a shocking day, didn't get one one appointment, and his boss was slightly less subtle than he probably could have been. He just turned around and said, Look, John, you know, you don't pick up the phone, mate, you don't get to talk to anyone, you don't talk to anyone, you don't get any appointment. You don't get to any appointments, you know, quite simply, you don't sell anything. And if you don't sell anything, you're not going to be here very long. <laughs> Talk about a motivational statement. <laughs> but it was back to that. It starts yeah. by energy and effort. And, of course, we have to be smart. It's not just numbers. But we've got to be resilient. And if you've had a bad day, how do you pick yourself up to keep doing that effort? And, uh those are the three things that we look at. There's no shortcuts, as we know. Absolutely. You actually you touched upon your your background there. You know your your, your previous Ooh. working issues. The route I was going to go down next, actually. So, how how do you sort of re reflect on um, you know your let, let's say career? You know the 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 previous ten years you've had. What what are the? I appreciate it, not the easiest question to answer. But what are the sort of main lessons that you've learned about you know, yourself? business sales along the way and how, how did you also sort of get into it as well I'm yeah it, it's, it's interesting because uh i left school at 17 in britain i was bored uh probably had good old adhd and didn't realize it uh you know concentrating study and all that at, at 16 17 18 wasn't my back so i left school at 17 joined the british army uh as an adult soldier uh, and I grew up very quickly with some pretty tough characters. But what it did was uh, it taught me to be very self-reliant. 
it taught me to have huge amounts of discipline that I'd come from an environment where probably I didn't. Uh, I had great parents who sort of, you do what you want to do, which was great. Uh, so that was great. It taught me a lot about team working and relying on others and listening to people that knew better than you did, which I think when I was that sort of age, it wasn't always the case. So I got into sales purely sort of, I wouldn't say by fluke, but I came out, messed around for a while as you do, uh, had a great couple of summers as a lifeguard in Saint-Tropez, which was a, not a bad thing when you're 20-odd years old. But I came back and my dad had been in sales, more technical sales, and said, give this a go. So I hunted around and I found a couple of sales jobs that I did for a while. No development, no training. So it was a case of those yellow pages, off you go, which was a bit of a disaster. Uh, and I look back now and I could have been positively dangerous because I didn't get that induction that I needed. I then got into a business that I really enjoyed and I started getting success. But then quite simply, one day I saw an advert to get into consulting, training, etc. And I thought, that sounds great. I love helping others. And the company I joined was a company at the time, which was the biggest sales training company in the world, or one of the big two called Mercury International. And I, I joined them. And the first thing we did was have a six months induction on, on basically how to sell and how to lead sales teams. And it scared me. And it scared me because I realized how I'd been doing so much wrong. But you know what? The greatest lesson I learned there, and I say this to a lot of my clients, was my boss said to me, all I want you to do is work hard. It's down to us as a business and as leaders to make sure you see the right people and you're bloody good when you get in front of them. And that really got me on the journey. So a lot of what I did, because I, was, I found I was pretty good at it, was actually selling the services we did. I ended up learning to be a consultant and a facilitator. And that, I think, actually helped me. Uh, and I've been in that for a long time now. And I've just got a passion for it. I love helping people. I always have. I love organizing. I love making you know, people you know, become more successful. And I got in, into it that way, Joe. And, and to be honest, look, uh, I couldn't, well, it's a bit late now, but I really, for about the last 20 odd years, I, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Maybe with a different organization at that time, but I just loved what I do. And, and that's what got me into it. You know, a few false starts, uh, saw a bit of the light, enjoyed it, realized what it could look like when you've got the basics and the foundation. And as you know, success breeds success. You start getting success. And rather than just sitting there celebrating it, you actually, you know, use that as a springboard to go out and do more. And I think that's what I've done. And, uh, you know, I'm as passionate today about helping people get better at selling and selling myself. Nothing had a win yesterday. Nothing like it. You know, you still, hey, you know, it's great. I love it still. Gives you that buzz. Uh, and by the way, I get incredibly pissed off if I lose. Luckily, it doesn't happen too often. But you've got to feel that because I yeah. think if you don't, go and do something else. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. What's made you stick around? Is it still you? Because you, you still like, I always say if you don't get that, if you, if you lost that buzz, then as you say, go do something else. Yeah, is definitely. it that you still get that? You, you still have the fire in the belly. Is it? Is it? Or is it that, you know, you say you love helping people. Is it? Is that your, let's say, you know, for a better term, your why? As into what, yeah, why you look, do there's this? a couple really. Uh, I do like helping. I love seeing a sales team. Well, there's two pieces. I love selling what I do. So that's great for me. And I love, you know, I love the thrill of the chase, the thrill of the kill, if you want, which sounds terrible, but I love that bit. Uh, and that still gives me a buzz. And uh, it's it's interesting. My my business partner who has worked with me, Nisa, who's been my assistant for 20 years now, poor girl, would have got less for murder. I think she feels that sometimes. Uh <laughs> But she says to me, you know, your passion still about it is, is quite scary. You love doing what you do. I think the other thing is that's great. But then what I've got to do 
is I've got, and this is what I love doing what I do, because not only do I make the promise, I've got to deliver on it. So I have to deliver on what I say I think our services can achieve for them. And I get a huge buzz when I see a business growing or individuals growing, Uh, you know, whether it be share of wallet, whether now that a lot of businesses are doing because some markets are declining, increasing market share, increasing share of wallet, increasing bottom line, increasing their revenue. That gives me a huge buzz. So winning it and doing that are both of my whys. And just think, seeing people engaged and liking what they do and demystifying sales, because a lot of people still think it's a sort of black art. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, and it's not. It really isn't. Uh, and I'm also a believer that you can actually help and develop people into sales. You know, it's not a, you know, salespeople are born, not made. Some have a natural preponderance towards doing it. But a lot of people, you can get them up to a level where they're pretty good at it purely by making sure they've got the right attitude and helping and supporting them, but then giving them those core skills and tools to do it. So they're my whys. Yeah. They really are. The, the one you were just talking about before, the when you, you know, care about or you you know you're passionate about actually seeing that business succeed and you believing that your work whatever you're doing whatever you're selling can help them yeah, achieve absolutely. that that's that's crucial i think i call it like that sort of give a shit factor like you if you don't really believe in what you're selling if you don't really believe that your product or service or whatever can help that the business then you're probably destined to fail but if, if you actually genuinely care about the person you're, you're trying to help goes a long way, I think. Yeah, look, I, I deal with a, such a different variety of, of sort of, you know, what I would call blue-collar sales, people that sell stuff. Okay, yeah. uh, I do the banking and finance sector, whether that be super funds, whether that be institutional or business banking. And I also do some work in, in sort of hotels and hospitality as well. Not much, but one very great global client I've got there. And every single one of those individuals, you know, we have some quite interesting debates in workshops about, you know, why are you here? And you hear some people going, I'm here to, you know, to hit the target. And I sort of get that because mm. you don't get paid and, you know, your boss is on your back and all of those things. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, if that's the only reason why you're there, look at the tenure of those individuals. They're not there very long. Because that's not enough of a reason to get out of bed in the morning necessarily. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's a hospitality, you know, business that's helping somebody run a great conference or set up a great wedding or a great function or, you know, give them the best client experience, whether it's a banking and finance institution, they're helping fund some growth for a major organization, whether it's a super fund for somebody like you and me, Joe, putting us into the right you know, funds so that we can, you know, fund what's going to be a way down the road, that retirement piece, uh, whether it's a, an electrical wholesaler or, a, you know, a, a distributor of bathroom products so that if you and I, you know, renovate our homes, we've got the very best outcomes for that. It's about helping and support people to be successful. And whilst my daughter's, you know, my dad helps other people make money, sort of doesn't fly in the face of that. That's the outcome yeah. that you get for helping and supporting and helping people grow and helping them nail their, their key business drivers. All of those things are interlocked. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. It's not just one thing, but I think if you don't have that passion for what it is you're trying to do and help your client in, it's not going to work. You yeah. know, if you're not supplying the right person because that's going to help that company grow, then why do it? It's not mm. just body shopping, as you know, it's been called in the industry over the years. I, it's sort of, um, it's two pronged, isn't it? There's that, what we just talked about there, that you've got to care about helping that business grow or yeah. do whatever they do. And then it's, then you can also, I feel like a lot of salespeople, there's the other side of things where, you know, they do just, it's almost, they use it as a tool to, to better themselves or to hit their target and make commission there's 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 the other things the other side of the, the coin as well which is 
almost a, which is more of the selfish where the selfish nature of a salesperson comes in yeah oh look i i don't think there's a salesperson probably out there who hasn't got a bit of that inside him and you've got yeah, exactly yeah. yeah yeah i've got a mortgage i can't jump over that i want to pay off quickly so let me say that is going to be an outcome of me helping and supporting people and i yeah. set myself even as an individual you know targets every year and i'm ruthless against that mm. and you know my assistant, she always laughs, especially after Christmas, and go, oh, God, you've had three weeks to contemplate what we're going to do again. Here we go. You know, <laughs> you're going to be miserable for a while because it's about how do we hit those numbers. I think you've always got to have that, but we shouldn't lose sight of the fact of what contributes to hitting that number because that yeah. number alone sometimes means if you only focus on that, and you know this, Joe, in your business, you want referral. You want references. I mean, I was lucky enough last week. I had I had two or three people phone me up, contact me again via LinkedIn. They hadn't dealt with me for eight years, and they tracked me down because of what we'd done all those years ago and the yeah. value that we'd given them. They haven't tracked me down because I sold them $50,000 worth of development or consulting. They tracked me down because we helped them be successful in whatever it was we did, or we, we met their experience expectation. You know, we gave them better customer experience or we drove better staff engagement or, you know, we helped them, you know, manage their processes more effectively or be seen in the market as more innovative. Yeah. Those are the reasons that sit behind our success. Yeah. And I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. But you've still got to be a bit selfish as a salesperson, because yeah. if you're not, you know, complacency will definitely get in the way. Yeah. But that, that, um, that contact from eight years ago, you sounds like you didn't, you know, just cut a deal and run. You know, no, absolutely you, you, not. No, that was, otherwise... one of the, that was one of the second tier banks. Mm. And, uh, you know, we were very, uh, I got involved almost, you know, about a week after I first came to Australia. And I remember them saying to me that they're, their aim was to double the size of their revenue, which for them is margin inside three years without increasing their cost base by more than 30%. And they did it in just under three years. And that right. business now is five times the size of that 13 years later. Right. And we put core processes, tools, mindset, great sales leadership in place that help drive that. And yes, on the back of it, we made good money. Let's be totally frank. But if we hadn't done that, and I still deal with probably four or five of those key team members all those years on, and people still track me down because we help them be successful. We help them with their staff engagement. We help them with their delivering customer experience. That's what it's all about. That's really what it's all about. David, we've talked about the past, you know, your past in particular. We've talked mm. about what you're doing at the moment. Um, just sort of finally wrapping things up. What, what are you sort of, what does the future look like for yourself? What, you know, you, you've done a lot in your, in your career, it, but, you know, it seems like the fire's still burning brightly or burning in the, you know, burning um, in, in the belly. What, what's, what does the future look like? Oh, you know, yourself? Desert Island, Daiquiri, all of that stuff would be nice, but... Uh... And one day, you know, there'll be, a, there'll be a chunk of my life is definitely like that. Mm. But I love what I do. Uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of friends the other day and a couple of ex-colleagues, and they said, I can't believe you're ever going to retire. And I probably won't. Uh, mm. You know, as long as I can enjoy what I do, add value to those I, I, I deal with, I'll keep on going. Uh, yeah. Whether I'll do it at the same level, uh, you know, with the same size projects, who knows? But as long as I've got the passion, as long as I love what I do, I'll just, you know, I keep on going. I, yeah. I, I love it and uh, uh, it's not going away and it still gets me gets me out of bed in the morning. And, yeah. uh, you know, today's proposal day and talking to a few more clients and nice. that's what I love. You know, without that, that's, uh, that gives me a purpose. You yeah. know, family, social, all those things are a, are a 
process that's in parallel and a yeah. purpose that's in parallel. But I think you've got to have that. Whatever you're happy and whatever you love, stick with it. You know, I saw, and it's a sad way in some respects towards getting to the end of this, but I saw my father retire early because he was forced to, and he lost the will. He lost that purpose and his passion and actually didn't last that long after it either because so much of his life had been tied to that. I, I'll never get to that phase, but I think, you know, do what you love doing. If you don't, do something else. Yeah. And I'm a great I'll, believer in that. I always think there's a sort of strange concept that if you just sort of, you're just waiting to retire, if you're not enjoying what you're doing and then you're kind of like, I'll retire, then I'll do what more makes me happy. It's like, well, you know, I'd rather just do what I enjoy. And then, it'll happen. About, and then, yeah, and then, and, yeah. Then, and then, and then, as you say, like, kind of never retire, really, if you, if you kind of, because you're not, you know, you're not really retiring, if that makes sense. Like, oh, look, the other thing, Jerry, is as well, let's be honest, I think you've still got to, you've still got to be stimulated in your mind. Right. You know, I've got, I've got a couple of mates of mine uh, back in the UK, they retired early, mm. uh, you know, 50, early 50s, very successful. Every single one of them has started another business. Mm. because they wanted that all salespeople by the way uh or ran their own business but are sales back they they love the thrill of the chase still they love that involvement with other people mm. great sailors you know one of them sails across the atlantic every year you know very nice on his 80 foot yacht or whatever he's got he's done very mm. well but guess what he's still competitive in his in his social life but now he started off another business because he wants that he needs that passion and that drive yeah. still. So, look, we should never motivate others by what motivates us. Everyone is different. My motivation is to keep going because I enjoy it. That's yeah. not to say that others haven't got something more motivational outside of work. And uh, mm. lucky people when they do. And, uh, hey, it's life. And as long mm. as you enjoy it, as long as you're around to enjoy it, that's the key thing. Leads me very nicely onto my final question, which is around the idea of success. You touched yeah. upon you know, the things that give you the purpose, which is obviously pretty closely mm. tied, I imagine. What, what, what does success mean to you in, in, in any, any which way, personal, professional? Oh, look, personal success uh, is, it might sound really bland and a bit blase, but it's just to, to be happy. You know, I've got my kids. Uh, I've got my eldest who's in the UK. I've got my uh, my two kids here. And they're all doing touch wood. You know, they're all doing pretty well, which is great. And that's a, that's a big buzz. Uh, you know, I don't think we should ever underestimate personal happiness uh, or ever take it for granted. And I certainly don't. I've been incredibly lucky through my life to have brilliant friends, brilliant colleagues, uh, and enjoy what I do which links into the, the business one. Uh, as long as I keep getting a buzz out of what I do, as long as I can help my clients be successful, for me, that's success for me. And that's what I love. So on a personal thing, be happy, see what the kids are doing. You know, occasionally, even with my dodgy golf handicap, you know, have a good round. The other side is very much enjoy what you do at work. Yeah. But again, still of that purpose for me, for helping people succeed. And let's be honest, still smashing out those numbers because I love doing that as well. Love it. David, thank you very much for running through that. I am um, going to definitely be listening back to that conversation. I'm going to be burning up a few notes um, myself. Great to talk all things sales. Great to talk things leadership, business. Um, loads of great insights there appreciate you coming on i appreciate you sharing um your journey and uh, your, your wisdom thank you very much for coming on it's been great to catch up and i'll um yeah if you want to check check david's business out um I'll, I'll leave the floor to you yeah so uh david mcmurdo i'm on linkedin uh and that's where joe and i still connect quite a bit uh and then the other thing is our website which is quite simple it's www dot mcmurdo consultants dot com and there's some background there as well uh, and feel free to reach out if you just want to chat 
that's where all these great things start from. So uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. And thanks, Joe, for inviting me on. Been a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bye now.